Simplihan na lang natin. Kung alam mo na yung mga non-negotiable mo at nasabi mo na yan, dapat lahat negotiable na. Huwag ka dapat mahirap kausap. <laughs> Hello, Supers! Welcome back to Paano Ba To? And for this episode of Paano Ba To? Sa pandemyang ito, let's talk about how we can future-proof our career. Like mentioned in the past episodes, we don't know how long this would really last. And for sure, there will be many changes in the years to come. So, paano? I speak with business consultant and entrepreneur, Kuya Anthony Pangilinan. And he does not just give advice on how to future-proof our career. He gives advice on how to future-proof our personal lives. You have to watch this. Welcome back to Paano Ba To? It's been Anthony a while. Anthony Pangilinan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's great to be back. Basically, we are going to discuss your tips on how we can future-proof our career. For everyone watching and listening, just a bit of a background. Kuya Anthony has an executive master in change. Is that correct? Whatever that means. Whatever that <laughs> means. <laughs> whatever that means. So before I get into the questions that I sent you, on a personal note, before we give advice, you studied change, right? You ended that course 2019, right before this all happened. So I'm curious, despite being a master of change, what surprised you most when this all happened? The, the idea that that we were and I was prepared for fires, but not for a fire storm. Kasi ang fire isa lang eh. Paminsan-minsan dumarating yan. And it's devastating, di ba? Pero yung fire storm, the concept of fire storm, sabay-sabay, apat, lima, anim na sunog, they give life to each other. Mm. When you're in a fire storm, they support each other. So it's so difficult to overcome a fire storm. Yun ang hindi ko na anticipate na sabay-sabay pagbabago ng gagaling sa lahat ng aspeto ng buhay. And I don't think any of us anticipated that. The black swan of all black swans, sabi ng CEO ng Grab. Si Grace. Firestorm. Okay. A life of and, its own. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a life of its own. And we don't really see a clear finish line. So I want to... We're still inside. To... We're still inside. We're, We're still, still inside. inside yeah. So we'll yeah. try to answer paano ba to together with everyone <laughs> listening. Okay. So I came across this term just very recently, but it's called VUCA. It yeah. was coined yeah. in 1987, way, 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 way back. But now more than ever, it seems to be so relevant. So VUCA Volatile, is... uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Kahit na yung mga words na, hindi ko No, so yeah, for everyone watching and listening, how would you explain the idea of VUCA in a in a simple way? Natatawa nga ako eh kasi sabi ko, di ba VUCA na tayo, volatile, um, uncertain natin alam, complex, parang hirap maintindihan, ambiguous, parang oh my gosh, please I want to understand. And nadagdagan pa ng COVID, saka ngayon sobrang anxious ng mga tao. E di VUCA, COVID anxiousness, VUCA ka na. Oh my gosh! <laughs> And it's a stretch. No, seriously. It's a stretch. And it's caught everyone off guard. It's really chaos in the environment. But I'll never forget the words of D. Hawk. I don't know if I've shared that with you. CEO Emeritus siya. CEO for life ng Visa. He said this years back. I was in a forum with him. Sabi niya, you must be a K-Yord. K-Yord. Person who accepts the chaos but provides order. So, tanggapin mo talaga na... Magulot, gugulo pa, maaring gumulo pa ang kapaligiran. But somehow, by the way you live your life, right, you provide order to the people you influence. Parang doon ka dapat naka-focus sa response mo eh. It's not what happens to you, Dr. John Maxwell said. It's what happens in you. That's important in life, you know? Wow. So much to unpack with what, what you just said. Yeah, definitely. So are you saying that If before, and I'll never forget this, when I asked you to, um, again, guess, answer on my book, the book form of Paano Ba To, you had to answer this oh, question. Book, book yeah, na, there no? was a book form. <laughs> you were part of it as well. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The, One of the questions that you had to answer was, Paano ba yan? Wala akong five-year plan or ten-year plan. And you oh, answered, my. it's okay that you don't have a ten-year plan. So parang, am I hearing you say now that, Ganun dapat yung mindset natin that we're not so close to 
one thing, one goal. Because nga, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, yeah. ambiguity. Yeah. Just recently, ha, I, I simplified it for myself. Dapat daw, ibahin na natin yung pag-iisip natin. The question is not, why is this happening? Ba't ba nangyayari to? Diba? You'll see this. Why, this, hap- why, is this ha- why is that happening? How should I be responding? We have to shift from why is this happening to how should I be responding? You know, I was reading the papers before. I came across this article. Matagal na to, pero hanggat ngayon, nasa, nasa mindset ko pa. Nasa pamamaraan ko na nga eh. The world record for the number of serves in tennis. Mm-hmm. Aces. Aces. Okay? In one game, was shattered. That game, 51 in one game. 51 aces. Di ba yung aces yun yung serve na hindi nasagot ng kalaban? Yes. Then I read the name, Joaquim Johansson. First time I ever heard, sino tong Johansson na to? Yun, 51 aces ang na-serve niya. Then I was thinking, how would you feel if you were the opponent? Diba? Nasa Guinness Book ka rin of World Records. Ikaw yung opponent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> diba? Woo! Woo! Shum, shum. Di, di mo na alam kung anong gagawin. Diba? 51 aces serve against you. Ikaw, how would you have felt, by the way, if 51 aces were served against you in one game? Bad trip. I'd feel it's really not my day. <laughs> Like, ang tagal ko nag-training tapos sa servan lang ako ng ace, hindi ko, ma, hindi ko mababalik man lang. Oo, 51 yeah. pa yon, di ba? Bakit ako pa na taon, di ba? Sa lahat ng pwedeng kalabanin, bakit ako pa? <laughs> and this is the mindset of a lot of people today in the pandemic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But you know what? His opponent that day, amazingly, still won. Because that day, Joaquim Johansson was battling against the number one returner of serves. He's known for that in the game of tennis. One of the final games of Andre Agassi. (gasps) And it just hit me, my gosh. All the aces served against him. He wasn't focused on that. You know, he didn't have that. He was focused on what he could return. And because he's still focused on what he could do, not what he could not do, he still won. So... (sighs) It's not what happens to you. It's what happens in you that's important is how you choose to respond. So for me, hindi ko na sasabihin na, oh, hanggat dito lang ako. Sana wag na ito. You know what? Stop thinking of the boundaries of what's gonna happen. Start just being mindful of the guidelines of how you will respond. I think that is the safest way of addressing changes like what we have in this pandemic. Not setting boundaries hanggang dito lang ako. Ako, pag luwampas pa yun. Ako, pag naulit pa ito. You know, you're, you're, you're actually setting up yourself for failure or for tra- tragedy. Kailangan, hindi na yon. Ang, ang isipin mo yung guidelines mo, how you can better respond. Does that make sense? That super makes sense. And that's so powerful. I remember I listened to a podcast recently and there was a similar cuento. It was a fighter pilot in a plane where one alarm was going off after another. And parang, mm. I think this was Adam Grant. He was talking about like, it's so easy to get overwhelmed by this alarm, this alarm, this alarm. And then you'll feel like the plane will go down. But he, the pilot, the fighter pilot, zoned in on what was still functioning and worked with that to safely land the plane. Yeah. I don't know the name of the flight director of Apollo 13, but it was true. When his superior said, oh my God, the worst tragedy we can think of. And he said, with all due respect, sir, this is going to be our best opportunity. And it was for NASA. It's so important. It's it's a struggle for me, but I fight daily to tell myself every circumstance I am in is a gift. Good, bad, or ugly. It's a gift, right? If it won't kill me, it'll strengthen me. It will stretch my capacity. It will make me be thankful for what I have. Every circumstance is a gift. And when you have a gift, you receive it. That's so powerful. It's like, I love your mind blown emoji that should like (laughs) come up right now. So you talked about so many mindsets, tips, advice on how to, I guess, navigate all the changes, all the firestorms. I guess, what are the traits we should develop to sort of have that come more naturally? The resilience, the openness. Are there any traits we should parang tune in more to and pay attention to more? I, th- I think we have to simplify things. I love it when I hear, lalo na mga experts talk about how to respond, pero napaka simple lang. For example, si Peter Drucker. He died maybe eight years ago, nine years ago. He was called the father of management. And when he was looking at so many things going on, change. Parang ganito yung bosses niya. There are only two rules to change management today. Okay. Too long. Two, two steps. In D15, in D8, in D10. Two. First step to change management is determine what you would absolutely not change. 
amidst all the changes, ano bang non-negotiable mo? Yun daw pinaka first step. Sabi ko, oh my God, two steps lang yun pa yung first step. <laughs> okay? So what could be the second step? Diba? You know what the second step is? After determining what should absolutely not change, then be open to changing absolutely everything else. <laughs> Which means wag ka dapat mahirap kausap, di ba? Simplihan na lang natin. Kung alam mo na yung mga non-negotiable mo at nasabi mo na yan, dapat lahat negotiable na. Ang problema kasi ng marami, you know, they say, I want this and this and this. Okay, klaro na. Okay, oh, so okay. We'll propose. Ah, hindi, hindi. Pwede yung ganito na rin. Okay, next. I, I am also not comfortable with it. Oh my God. Wag na lang, di ba? I mean, we have, we're not even aware of what our, our essentials are. And the pandemic has taught us that, di ba? I hope, I hope we're all learning. Ano ba talagang essentials sa'yo? Yeah, I absolutely love that. Super. Okay, to end this, everything yeah. you have said really applies to how to navigate our lives in the months and years to come in general. But I just like to, I guess, hone in career-wise because, of course, that is the concern of a lot of people now, di ba? Yeah. Keeping my job, staying my job, okay. progressing in my job, thriving in my job. So although the future is uncertain, how can we somehow future-proof our career? Okay, five minutes before you called, I had to come up with an acronym for you. Okay? <laughs> the acronym King Strikes Again. Okay, solid. Mm. The word is solid. You want to future-proof your career, solid. S. You gotta have a support system. Multiple streams. Kung pwede sana, meron kang main job, may sideline. Makakatulong yon. Meron kang support system, di ba? And then, it's not lifetime employment that's important. It's employability. Employability is the ability to get employed whenever you want it, wherever you need it. Mm-hmm. And there's only one key to employability. Continuous improvement. So, S is for have a support system. O is for opportunity radar. Kailangan parating nakabukas yan. Di ba? Maybe I can't grab this opportunity today, but if anything happens, mukhang kakayanin ko to. Kailangan may listahan ako. Di ba? At ina-update ko yan. Right? Dapat ganun yon. Opportunity radar. When my daughter Hannah said, Dad, it's time for a podcast. Di ba? Say, <laughs> kontali ko nang ginagawa. <laughs> Come on, come on, that she convinced. She said, "But you already have the content, and you're come on, just, just." So it's been a year, and I have what 230 mm-hmm. podcasts, you know, which can become a book, which can become, you know, a vlog. It could be so. That's there. I have content that I can work on if anything happens to the rest of my career. You have to have an opportunity radar. Mm-hmm. Always on. Mm-hmm. Solid. L, leveraging. Huhugot ka dito. Huhugot ka doon. Hihingi ka ng tulong dito. Di ba? Meron kang konting kilala dyan. May network ka doon. It means you're able to pull and push. Press a button when needed. Gumawa ka ng paraan. But you have to have an idea also of what your resources are. Sino mga kakilala mo? Sino yung mga binigyan mo ng trabaho dati? Sino yung mga tinulungan mo? Kasi balang araw pwede mo takbon yan. Di ba? So leveraging is so important. I is inner circle. So mentors. Right? People who have your ear. People who speak life to you. Napaka-importante niyan. I cannot over, you know, stress the importance of mentors in my life since, since I was 17, 18. And then finally, of course, divine intervention. You know, the God who orchestrates all. Solid. I want to say just one last thing. And, and that's a quote from a book called Wild at Heart. And I have maybe shared this in another time with you. But I just want to stress it. Now, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Instead, ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is a person who has come alive. For me, it's, it's the best career, best life mission mode, you know, statement. Don't keep on asking yourself, ano kailangan ng kliente? Ano kailangan ng customer? Ano kailangan ng asawa ko? Ano kailangan ng anak ko? Diba? Ano kailangan ng boss ko? At one point, you have to stop. You have to ask yourself, what makes you come alive? You do that. Because when you do what makes you come alive, you realize, yun lang kailangan ng customer mo. Yun lang kailangan ng asawa mo na buhay ka na naman. Yun lang kailangan ng mga anak mo. And, and my illustration here is, when Maricel cooked for 10 years on television and never cooked at home, I was so discouraged. Kasi sa TV lang siya nagluluto. <laughs> Pero it hit me that it was television that made her come alive at the kitchen. Noong una, inis pa ako. Sabi ko, ako na nga magluluto. Ayaw magluto. Ako magluluto. Diba? 
And the moment I stepped in the kitchen, Bianca, oh my gosh, the memory of me cooking with my dad when we were young. The recipes that we cooked together came back. I had forgotten. I knew how to cook. With my red wine, my apron, my candle slit, classical music playing, I came alive. And the amazing thing here is when I came alive, the whole house came alive. All my kids dropped their gadget. Dad, I'll take care of the dessert. Dad, I'll take care of, you know, the, can I cook the rice with you? Of course, Maricel's so excited because I'm going to whip up some vegetarian dish for her. You know why they came alive? Because they love to see the father of the whole house come alive. I want you to trust, you said I've been me. Dory Clark, your core IP, your core intellectual property, your core best self. Go back to that. That is the ultimate future proofing of not just your career, but of your life. In fact, sometimes you have to let go of your career to find yourself in your life again. Grabe. I swear that even if I've had these life talks with you several times, there's always something so surprising, so inspiring, and so nakaka-ignite ng fire whenever you give advice. So thank you. You're welcome. I love your so questions. Much. Your questions bring them out, Bianca. Your questions bring them out. And your listening ear is there. You know, I'm just reflecting. I'm resonating with you oh. and, and how, how you are. Thank you so, so, so much. Okay. Take care. Too many takeaways. Grabe. Think how we want to respond. Solid. S-O-L-I-D. I would love to hear from you what your favorite takeaway from this episode is. You can leave a comment on this video. You can DM me at I am Super Bianca or tag me in your Instagram stories or your tweets. And of course, you can join our safe space, our private Facebook group, the Paano Ba To Kumustahan group. Until our next episode here on Paano Ba To, maraming salamat supers! Stay safe!